Let's play some cards. Actually, we're going to be taking a look at the EMF Gambler Royale. It's the gambler's gun, I guess. It's nice, fancy engraving on it. This is from EMF, or Early Modern Firearms. I'm Richard, and this is Small Caliber Arms Review. All right, everybody, we're out here at the saloon. This is the EMF, or Early Modern Firearms, Gambler Royale. It's just a beautiful, I believe it's laser engraved firearm, uh, single action army. This is a uh, 45 Colt is the, the caliber that this one's chambered in. I think they are available in 38, 357 if you'd rather shoot those, but I've really become fond of 45 Colts. Now, I'm only gonna take a few shots with it because I'm just, the gun is just pretty. That's all there is to it. Uh, it's a good shooter. I have shot it a few times already. I've got some uh, Aguila 45 Colt Cowboy action loads here. These are 200 grain. I don't know what the velocity is on these things, but they're, um, they're a little bit slower for the cowboy action stuff because you just don't need, it's not self-protection. Maybe it was, you know, a hundred so years ago, but this is a kind of a novelty gun, but it's a really pretty novelty gun. It's a good collector's gun too. If you're into the single action armies, the old, old West guns, the cowboy guns and stuff, this is a great one to add to the collection. It's got the, uh, just the plain steel. It's not nickel on the frame part there, but the barrel is blued and the back strap is blued. Nice black grips on it. And it's, it's just a single action army. It's a nice looking one. Hopefully you've already seen the video I did on the holster and the belt. If you haven't, go ahead and click this little link up here and check those videos out. And you'll kind of see the little story of the thing here, I guess, at least the, the holster part of it. But we're going to get this thing loaded up with some 45 Colt the Aguilas there and give it a few shots. I've got a small target set up at seven yards. And then I got a silhouette target set up out there. And at about high noon, I'm going to meet that guy out in the street and we're going to settle a score. All right, most of the time with a single action army, the cowboy guns like this, you want to load it with five rounds in there. What you'll do is open the loading gate, pull the hammer back to half cock, and then that frees up the cylinder to spin. And usually what they'll do is they'll load one round, skip one, and then load the other four. And then you're ready once you rest the hammer back down to take off your first shot. And then your hammer will be resting over the empty chamber in the cylinder. We're gonna go ahead and load this thing up with six rounds because I'm out here on the range. I'm not gonna be out horseback riding or anything. And I'm unfortunately not gonna get into a poker game, but oh well. We'll get this thing loaded up and take a few accuracy shots. Like I said, this is cowboy ammo here, so it's, it's not precision ammo. These weren't, I guess, precision guns, especially with the shorter four and three quarter inch barrel on there. But we'll see what it does at the seven yard target. All right, it's not classic cowboy wear, but I got eyes on and I got my ears in because this thing's a little loud and you wanna make sure that you don't get any debris in your eyes or anything. That's probably the most important thing. You wanna keep your eyesight. And I've got the seven yard target up there. We're gonna go ahead and pull this thing out, get it pointed where you want it, pull your hammer back. And then all you gotta do is pull the trigger to release it. Keep your finger out of the trigger guard until you're ready. I believe this one shoots a little high. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and give it a try and see what it does at the seven yard target. I stand corrected, it shoots a little bit low. That's with the top of the front sight, even with the groove in the back strap there, the top strap there, it's shooting just a hair low. Now, other than a regular double action uh, revolver with the tip out cylinder, these are some of my other favorite ones to unload because all you gotta do is pull your hammer back to half cock, open up your loading gate, and then hold your hand underneath there. And a lot of times the shells will just fall right out. And if they don't, on the side here, you got your ejector rod, and this is the ejector housing there. Just pull that down. There's a spring-loaded rod in there that'll pop those rounds out of there. And all but one of them just fell right out. And I've got them right there in my hand. Easy ones to throw in the tumbler, clean up, and get reloaded. We're going to load up uh, six more in this thing. Give it another try. Now, the next six I'm going to load are going to be some of my hand loads. And I've got those in my belt, actually. So I'm going to go ahead and put these in. And then we'll take six shots at that guy up there on the... Uh, that wants to have the duel, the, the gunfight with me. I think I can take him. 
Again, I went ahead and put six rounds in there, and you want to be careful when you're doing that. If you're in a safe place on your own private range or something like that, it's okay. Just be very careful with it because there is a chance, there always is a chance that it could go off. Keep it pointed in a safe direction, keep it in a safe condition. It's a no good dirty card cheat. Now wait a minute. This is not the kind of ammo you want to practice your fast draw with. There are wax loads that you can get to practice your fast draw stuff with. It's a whole lot safer. So we're just going to take some nice steady shots at this guy here and see how they do because I'm not going to risk it with live ammo. All right, there's my six rounds there. I've got one, two, three, four. I've got one I just pierced his ear there with, and I got one right in the center of his face there, so uh, I don't have to worry about him cheating the cards anymore. It's kind of a brutal punishment for just cheating the cards. Anyways, let's take a few more shots. All right, there was my six rounds in the silhouette target up there. Let's go ahead and get this thing pulled back to half cock, open it up, and get them unloaded. Again, these are my second favorite firearms to uh, unload because they just, it's so easy. You don't have to chase brass all over the place. And that's all six of those. And I've got four more rounds of the Aguila Cowboy loads. And I think I'm going to go ahead and put those four in there and uh, give it some shots from here at the saloon back there to the 15 yard target instead of staying over to the side. Actually, when I took those shots, I stood just a little bit farther away than 15 yards because I backed up a little bit. All right, I've got two empty chambers there and I've got the four Aguila Cowboy loads in there. We're going to take some 15 yard shots at the old uh, bad guy up there and see how they do. We'll do them one handed. That was my four shots there. I actually did better back here than I did over there. Anyways, again, unloading, piece of cake. Love it when they fall right out. Every now and then you get one that's a little bit sticky. It's really a good shooting gun. It does not have any kind of polished job or anything on the trigger. It's just factory condition and it shoots great as a factory gun. Let's take a little bit closer look at it. Okay, here's a little closer look at it up on the bar top there. I've got the hammer pulled back to half cock because that's where I left it when I was unloading it. It is clear, so we're not going to worry about any accidental discharges up here. Um, but to remove the cylinder for cleaning this thing, it's a piece of cake. Go ahead and open your cylinder back up, pull it back to the half cock position. And on this side, there's this little spring loaded screw right here. And this is your base pin or your center pin right there. What you got to do is push that down and then pull that center pin out, and then you see your cylinder falls right out there. Once you've got that out, then you can go ahead and clean the face of that all up, clean your chambers out, clean this side up and everything, and then you've got easy access to the bore there to get in and clean everything out. I don't know if you'll be able to see too much of the, uh, the engraving in this. It's, it's really easy to see in person, but on the camera it might not pick up so well. And then you can see on the top there, this is the Great Western II, Maybe you can see it, maybe you can't. Uh, but it's really nice engraving on this gun. I like the black grips on it. You can change them out if you want. Um, but they're a one piece grip, so you have to take the, the back strap off of there and it's one piece that slides in there. And um, they make some with screws in them. I don't care for those too much. I like that smooth wood look like that. Just a good looking gun. All right, now here's the reason they do the cowboy load is because this is, I don't know if you can see that, that's the end of the firing pin right there. It sticks through that cylinder just a little bit. Now, when you pull this hammer back and you pull that trigger and that goes falling forward, that comes through there and hits the end of that round and sets it off. If you have a live round there, that firing pin is touching that primer and you don't want that. It'll rest on there just a little bit. There is a little click right there where it comes back. But even Sam Colt, I believe, said that he did not 
rely on his own safety on these firearms. He went ahead and said, you know, leave one empty chamber in the cylinder there. So you definitely want to do that unless you're in a safe place on a range. I would not carry it with six rounds in there because this can be dislodged, go forward and hit that round, especially if you were to drop it and it was to fall down like that and land on the hammer. And who knows where that round's going. Uh, reassembly of this thing, piece of cake too. Just go ahead and put it back in the same way it came out on the side with the loading gate. Roll that in there some. You'll have to pull that hammer back to half cock. Get that cylinder rolled in there. You'll find the sweet spot where it goes in at. And once it's all lined up, go ahead and push your base pin back in there. You may have to push that spring pin down again. Okay, now I got it in there. I actually pushed it in too far. So I caught that first one and that's about where it'll hold the hammer right there. So these are really, they're good guns. Uh, there are some pretty tight tolerances on there. There's no cylinder locks up nice and tight. There's no wobble to it. Even when you pull it all the way back, there is no wobble to it either. It's just a good quality firearm and a really nice shooting one too. Pretty easy to clean up. Just a little ram oil and everything is what I use. Anyways, you can use whatever cleaner that you're used to, you like to use, but um, that's the EMF Gambler Royale. It's a good looking gun. All right, everybody, thanks for joining me out here at the saloon and taking a look at the Gambler Royale from EMF. It's actually made by Pieta in Italy, and they make a lot of copies of Old West American guns. And this is not going to set you back what a Colt would set you back. I think I paid right around $5.50 for this, and I've had it for quite a while, so they're getting really scarce right now. Hopefully that supply will all come back one of these days. But it's a good shooting single action army in 45 Colt. It's nice, tight tolerances on it. It's just basically a good looking cowboy gun. If you could check out some of my other videos like the making of the holster on this for this gun and the belt and everything. I did that in two separate videos. Check out some of my other videos by hitting this button up here and also subscribe if you haven't already. And thanks for taking a look at Small Caliber Arms Review and the Gambler Royale. Thank <laughs> you.